Once you get hooked on it, you will not go back. Once you go black, you know what they say. Okay. Hello everyone, it's Rose and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another video. Today's video is going to be all about how to replace dairy in your diet. This is the second video in my how to replace blank in your diet series and I've already done one on meat so if you're interested in how to replace meat in your diet you can check out the link down below as well as somewhere in this corner something will pop up and you can click that as well but today's focus is going to be all about dairy and how to replace dairy products in your diet so before I get started I just want to point out that nothing in this video is actually necessary what I mean is that you don't have to feel like you have to replace dairy because dairy is not a necessary component of our human diet in the first place. If it was, then I would not be surviving. I have been dairy free for the past eight years. So yes, guys, I have been vegan for five years, but I actually haven't had any dairy. Well, intentionally, I haven't had any dairy since about eight years ago. So I've been dairy free for eight years. It is absolutely unnecessary. You do not need dairy in your diet. And a lot of people argue that dairy is actually very bad for us. And most humans are actually intolerant of dairy. I believe that Asians and African Americans are actually quite dairy intolerant. You know what? Let me just pull up some statistics. Okay, so it looks like, <laughs> I mean, this is, I don't know what website this is, milk.procon.org, okay. I mean, don't quote me on this, I'll link this down below, you can check, but it says 90 to 100% of East Asians are lactose intolerant, and indigenous people 80 to 100 percent, Central Asian people 80 percent, African American people 75 percent, Africans from Africa 70 to 90 percent. I mean you get the gist. Most people are actually intolerant of dairy unless they grow up in a place in the Western world where actually I think you have to have some sort of a mutation to actually be able to tolerate dairy which is why people in the Western world are able to tolerate dairy a lot better than Eastern world. But basically the idea is that human beings probably shouldn't be consuming dairy in the first place mainly because why do we need the milk of another species as adults first of all we're the only species that drinks the milk of another species second of all we're the only species that drinks milk as grown adults dairy is made for baby cows I don't want to go into this too much but I do feel like it is necessary for me to explain why I don't consume dairy so like I mentioned dairy is meant for baby cows it is made for calves. And that is very obvious when you know that a female cow cannot produce milk unless she is pregnant. So that is the only way that a female cow can actually lactate. And it sounds very obvious, but it's something that I did not even think about before I read up on it. So it's something that I just, I don't know, I just assumed that dairy cows just constantly produce milk. So I didn't actually realize that they actually had to be pregnant. I know it sounds really dumb, but I didn't realize they actually had to be pregnant to produce milk. Milk. But it's very obvious if you actually think about it. It's the same thing with humans. Humans don't need to produce milk unless they are pregnant. So your body is very smart. So it's only going to produce milk when you are pregnant. So it's the same thing with cows. So what happens in the dairy industry is actually extremely gruesome. In order for the female cow to be producing milk, she has to be pregnant. So what happens is that they actually are forcibly impregnated. So they are forcibly injected with bull semen in order to be able to be pregnant. So this is why a lot of vegans use the term rape although I try not to use that term because I feel like it doesn't really help to use such a graphic term although you know it does make sense I think you can see why people would use that term because you know you are forcibly you know doing something that is extremely violating even though it's not a human being I know but a cow is smart they know what's going on and it's definitely not a pleasant experience for the cow if you can imagine so anyways the cow is forcibly impregnated to be able to produce the milk. So what happens is once that baby cow is born, the cow is actually taken away from his or her mother almost immediately, I believe, because we can't have the baby calf drinking the milk of his mother because that milk is 
is for sale. It needs to be sold because it is the dairy industry. So they are actually separated. The mother and the calf are separated, which is an extremely traumatizing experience for the mother and of course the baby as well. But the mothers have a very, very, very strong bond with their offspring. So it's just an extremely sad and depressing and very, very horrible situation. And that is why I don't support the dairy industry. And I believe what happens to the calves is uh, dependent on the sex of the calves. So if it is a female calf, then that female will go on to live the same unfortunate life as her mother. And if it's a male calf, then that calf will most likely be sent to the veal industry to be slaughtered for meat. So it's a very gruesome industry. There are so many different reasons as to why I don't support it and why I don't think anyone should support such a horrible industry, especially living in a world where we claim to love animals and claim to have compassion. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense from an ethical point of view. It doesn't make sense from a health point of view. It doesn't make sense from an environmental point of view. So there's just so many negatives all around. So I really, really, really would encourage you to go and do some research. I'll leave some sources down below. And also, um, hopefully, I'll try to inspire you to replace some of your dairy products with non-dairy alternatives. All right, so that was a pretty long intro, but I felt like it was necessary for me to explain the side of dairy that is very scary. Yes, I know I'm like kind of smiling right now, but I don't really like to be too like, I don't want to be like extremely, you know, down and I don't want to make this video super melodramatic, but it is a very, very sad situation. And the first time I heard about it, it really made me cry. And it's still like, if I watch any clips where, you know, about the dairy industry, it still makes me cry, it still makes me tear up. It's not something that I want to support ever. So I hope you took something away from that. Now, on to the practical tips. So I did make a few little notes as to what I want to discuss. So we're going to go through the different types of dairy products that are very popular and very prevalent. But like I said, you guys, I've been following a plant-based diet for five years and almost a plant-based diet for eight years, non-dairy diet for eight years. And I can tell you that you do not need to like try to replace it. I feel like a lot of it is just um, deciding that you're no longer going to consume dairy. And then there might be a few weeks where you feel like a bit of a withdrawal and you might feel lots of cravings and things like that but after a while it will go away your body will adjust to a new diet and then you probably will not even miss dairy anymore but yeah just putting that out there. So the first thing that you might want to replace is obviously milk. So milk is something that I personally never liked milk, okay? Fun fact, I never actually enjoyed drinking milk. The only time I drank actual milk was if I had it in like a chocolate milk form or like strawberry milk or something like that. I never liked the taste of like plain milk, so. Fun fact. So there's so many milk alternatives out there, you guys. There are literally so many now. We have almond milk, oat milk, soy milk, coconut milk, rice milk, hemp milk. What else do we have? I mean, there is a cashew milk. I mean, there's just so many different alternatives. And yes, it's a little bit more expensive. Although now I think because it's getting more and more popular, these milks are going to be more readily available and hopefully will become cheaper. Other alternatives for these milks, for buying these milks in store, would be to make your own plant-based milks. So a lot of people make their own almond milk. They say that it tastes a lot better and it just is obviously better because there's no preservatives and there's no other ingredients in there. It's just almonds and like salt and water and maybe some sweetener. I personally am a little bit too lazy to make my own milks, although I was thinking about maybe doing like a video where I make a bunch of plant-based milks and like taste the difference between them. Let me know if you might be interested in that. But yeah, there's a lot of different resources out there for making your own milks. I would probably try making oat milk. Oh, I have made oat milk before, so that works. And oat milk is probably one of the cheaper and easier milks to make. Oats are really, really cheap. So if you are looking to save some money, I would recommend making oat milk. And yeah, I'm gonna, again, link some resources down below to making your own plant-based milks if you want to maybe save some money or if you want to, you know, be a little bit healthier and stay away from I don't know, store-bought things, but I don't have a problem with buying store-bought milks, so I like to always buy like almond milk and stuff like that. Second thing I wanna talk about is yogurt. So obviously you might want to replace yogurt in your diet. Now, there might be a few reasons as to why. Obviously, you know, a lot of people like the taste of yogurt and luckily enough, I feel like now we have reached a point, at least in a lot of bigger cities, we've reached a point where there are some great plant-based yogurt alternatives out there. Oh, actually, let me go grab one right now. 
Here we have a dairy-free yogurt. So this one is by the brand Daya, which is very well known. This is made with a lot of different things. I've actually tried this before and it's really good. So this one's a, I don't know, but it's good. So I was very skeptical, but this one's the peach flavor. I think the peach flavor is my favorite. So this definitely just has that delicious yogurt taste and that tanginess. I know it looks kind of chunky, but whatever, you know? Mmm, so good. Mm. I'm not gonna name all the alternatives. There are lots of different alternatives, lots of different brands that do plant-based yogurts. There's coconut-based, there's soy-based, there's almond-based. And I know when I first stopped eating dairy, I remember I bought like some soy-based yogurt and it was disgusting, okay? It was like so bad. And I thought, oh my God, I can never enjoy yogurt again. But thankfully, there are some new delicious brands out there. This one is really good. It has my stamp of approval. And I would just try out a few different things if you don't mind paying a little bit extra out. But did you know you could actually make your own yogurt? Yay! There are ways of making your own yogurt, potentially saving some money. So I actually have a video. I'm going to dig it up from my archives. I have a video where I made my own yogurt and I used to do that and it was actually quite tasty and it gives you that tangy yogurt flavor. It's almost better than a store-bought yogurt once again because you know exactly what you're putting in there and it has that more like really plain kind of yogurty taste. I don't know how to describe it, but I think you know what I'm talking about, hopefully. So all I did was use some probiotic capsules. So basically what it is, is yogurt is just kind of like a bunch of probiotics, right? So I just use a bunch of probiotic capsules to create yogurt using like soy milk or something like that. You just mix in probiotics into a soy milk, leave it out in room temperature for like 24 to 48 hours, and then it becomes like a thick yogurt. And another way that I've seen people make yogurt is they would buy like a plain yogurt like this, probably not a flavored one, but like a plain dairy-free yogurt, and then they'll just add like a little scoop of it with some like dairy-free milk, maybe coconut milk or like a plain soy milk, and then mix that in and then let it sit again in room temperature for 24 hours or 48 hours, and then it becomes like an actual yogurt. You know what? Let me let me actually try this out and I'll 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 get back to you. And also just putting it out there in case you just wanted yogurt for the probiotic benefits. There are so many other foods out there with probiotics. My favorite would be kimchi. Kimchi is a Korean traditional side dish made with fermented cabbage and it is filled with probiotics and just healthy gut bacteria. It's just awesome. So if that's just all you're looking for, some probiotics, there are so many different plant-based options for that. And now for everyone's favorite thing, cheese. So luckily for me, I grew up as an Asian. Yes, I was actually born in South Korea and I moved to Canada when I was eight. And when I was growing up in South Korea, I actually did not like cheese. I think I was just not used to it because my diet had never really had any cheese in it. You know, everything we ate was Korean food mostly. So I wasn't used to cheese and anytime I ate it, I did not enjoy it. That wasn't until later when I moved to North America that I started eating cheese and getting addicted to cheese. Now, luckily, because I didn't eat too, too much cheese growing up, giving up cheese wasn't the most difficult thing for me. But I know that for a lot of people, cheese is the most difficult thing to give up. This is the one thing that keeps vegetarians from going vegan. Now, I just wanna say once again that this is an addiction and a lot of times, once you decide not to eat something for a long time, after a while, you will probably be able to live without it. Uh, you just have to have a very strong why, very strong purpose, and you'll be able to live without it. But luckily, there are plant-based alternatives out there for cheese. Now, obviously, there are store-bought cheeses, which I will talk about, store-bought plant-based cheeses, and I don't know all of the brands. Once again, I'm not always in search of plant plant-based cheeses because it's just not something that I find necessary in my everyday diet. I will have like plant-based cheese if I'm eating out at like a restaurant or something and once in a while I'll buy like a plant-based cheese but I find myself not even going through that whole package. I end up freezing it and then just forgetting about it. Yeah. <laughs> so that goes to show that I like have really very little like desire to have cheese in my life but Again, let's talk about store-bought cheeses. So some of the ones I know are obviously Dea, which is a big brand in North America. Now, Dea is a hit and miss, or hit or miss, I say. Just depending on, you know, what you make with the Dea cheeses, you may have a different experience. A lot of people don't like Dea. I just want to put that out there. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't like Dea cheese. It has a very distinct flavor sometimes, and I get why some people don't really like it. So if you try Dea cheese and you don't like it, don't think that that is the only, only cheese alternative. Also, I mean,
mean, if you try any sort of plant-based cheese and you don't like it, trust me, there's probably a brand out there that you actually will like. Some brands that I believe have a pretty good reputation are Follow Your Heart. I feel like that is supposed to be a good cheese. I think I've tried it, I can't remember. There's also Chow Cheese, which I actually really like. That might be my favorite like sliced cheese. You can also find in your local area if you can find it. This would be very expensive probably, but you could find like cashew based, like really fancy cheeses. You know, those cheese, like those things that come in the cheese would, you know what I mean. You could also buy those. They're definitely a little bit more expensive, but they're really, really great for like a wine night or like just a nice like vegan charcuterie board or something. So yeah, there are options out there. It is going to be very expensive to buy plant-based cheeses. So what I would probably recommend is to try to just wean off of cheese altogether. Just make a lot of vegan plant-based meals that do not require cheese. Just focus a lot, maybe on Asian dishes because a lot of Asian dishes don't have any cheese at all. So focus on that and you know for the first while so that maybe you can just get rid of those cravings altogether and then you know once in a while you can have a little bit of plant-based cheese once in a while but there are options of also making your own cheese like things so one thing that i really really love making is tofu ricotta or tofu cheese spread whatever you want to call this you can pretty much call it whatever or use it for whatever purpose. This works beautifully in lasagna. I talk about it all the time. I'll leave a link to a recipe for this down below, but it's basically a really, really simple tofu-based cheese alternative and it tastes amazing. In a lasagna, it actually tastes like like cheese, okay? Like a lot of people ask me what that is. They think it's cheese, but it's actually tofu with just a few other ingredients. It's so simple, it's healthy, and it's just, it's awesome. So tofu is a great base for a lot of different things and it could make a lot of different cheesy type things, okay? Another thing, another ingredient that you could use to make a plant-based cheese would be cashews. Cashews are often used to make any sort of creamy or cheesy-like substance because of that natural creamy texture. So when you blend up cashews that have been softened, it really, really creates a nice creamy texture that really feels like it's made from dairy, which is crazy. Mainly, I like to use cashews for like a cream sauce, which I'll talk about next, but you can also make cashew-based cheese. So so that's something you could look at. There must be tons of recipes out there on the internet that you can look to for inspiration if you want to make cashew-based cheeses or maybe even make a tofu-based style cheese. And another very necessary ingredient that you will definitely, definitely need in your life if you are vegan is nutritional yeast. Yes, guys, nutritional yeast is so important, especially if you want to make like a plant-based cheese, you probably will need to use nutritional yeast in both the cashew cheese recipes and also you will need it in the tofu ricotta recipe. It's hard to explain nutritional yeast because I don't actually think when you eat it on its own, it tastes like cheese, but it almost has that kind of like cheesy like flavor almost. It gives you that kind of that vibe. And if you, if you mix it with certain things, it really does replicate that kind of similar vibe. So nutritional yeast is a must if you are someone that wants to replicate cheese. Now that we're talking about cheese, let's talk about Parmesan cheese. Parmesan cheese, you could actually make using cashews once again, but you don't have to soak the cashews. You just blend up the cashews to kind of create like a crumble. And then you add in some nutritional yeast. You might want to add in some garlic powder, some salt, and it creates a really, really nice Parmesan cheese. I'm going to link a recipe down below once again for a delicious vegan cheese-free cheese, a cheese-free Parmesan cheese. Another little yogurt break. It's a bit chunkier than I would like, but it's still nice. The next thing that you might want to replace in your diet is cream, some sort of a cream sauce, or maybe you want some cream in your coffee, yes. Now, I am one to drink coffee black. I like black coffee, I've drank black coffee even before I was vegan, so it's hard for me to say about a creamer, but I know that there's a brand called Silk, and they do like plant-based milks of all sorts, and they also make a creamer, and I know that there's a bunch of other alternatives out there, which I will show you here on the screen for plant-based creamers. Again, I don't do creamers ever, so I don't know. I've never really tried any of these because I don't like creamers in my coffee. <sighs> so yeah, I don't know. I would recommend trying your coffee black. Black coffee is delicious. It is great. Once you get hooked on it, you will not go back. Once you go black, you know what they say. Okay. So other than cream for your coffee, let's talk about creamy sauces. So creamy sauces, okay, who doesn't love a creamy sauce? Okay. 
there are a few different ways of making creamy sauces. My favorite way, I think, at least as of now, would be a cashew-based cream sauce. Like I mentioned before, cashews create a delicious and very creamy consistency once you soak it and once you blend it up nicely with different spices and different things, it creates a really delicious sauce, which I love using as like an Alfredo sauce. And I actually did a recent video on a four ingredient cream sauce. So I'm gonna actually link that down below because it is delicious, it is bomb, you definitely need to try it. Another way that you can make like a creamy sauce is by using something like coconut milk. Coconut milk is great because it's already very thick and it can create a really, really nice kind of thick consistency. I personally prefer not to use coconut milk for a lot of different recipes because coconut milk does have a distinct flavor. So I feel like it goes well in certain dishes, but not well in others but it can be a very, very good way to make a creamy sauce. What else do I use? Oh, another way that you can make a creamy sauce is by using tofu. Once again, tofu is great, okay? Tofu is awesome, it is versatile, it is fantastic. If you use a nice soft tofu, blend it up with some bunch of other ingredients to make it taste all good, you could make a really nice creamy sauce. You can use silken tofu or soft tofu. You can make a really, really nice even creamy dressing with it and you can make a nice creamy sauce. Yeah, tofu is awesome. So definitely look into tofu for that. I'll link my tofu video down below where it shows you what I do with tofu. <laughs> Speaking of cream, let's also talk about whipped cream. I totally forgot about whipped cream because I don't really use whipped cream, but whipped cream is something you can make easily. What you wanna do is try to buy like a pure form of coconut milk in the can that's a regular coconut milk, not a light, and you wanna put that in the fridge, leave it overnight, and then when you take it out and open it, it's going to separate. So the fatty, milky part is going to separate from the liquid and it's gonna become this like fat, like this big chunk of white, like thick fat, coconut milk thing. So then you wanna take that out, that thick chunk part, throw away the, the liquid part, and then you wanna put that thick chunk into a big bowl, a mixing bowl, and then you want to whip it with a nice electric mixer thingy. Why can't I talk? And then it's going to whip into a nice whipped cream. So that creates your delicious whipped cream using coconut milk, delicious. Mm. Another thing that you may wanna replace in your diet Butter, okay? Again, this is a thing that I never really ate a lot of, but of course, I did eat it, you know? Um, but it's not something that I feel the need to like, replace. But now, there are some really great alternatives. So you can actually buy a dairy-free butter, or like a dairy-free margarine, I guess I would say. Dairy-free margarine, and the brand I use is called Basel, I think, it's by Basel. And it's like in this big green tub. It's actually affordable, like it's not expensive, and it lasts forever. So I just use that if I need like a dairy-free butter. There's other alternatives, there's other brands out there, but I think that one is the most cheap one that I could find, but it's in Canada. I don't know if it's available everywhere. So yeah, dairy-free butters are available out there. But one thing I would use, which is a much healthier option, you know what they say, nature's butter is avocado, guys, avocado. So if you want something to spread on your toast, why spread butter when you could spread avocado, okay? Obviously, avocados, you know, they're not cheap. Well, depending on where you are, maybe it's cheap, but avocado is a great alternative, you know? Like, if you're just looking for some sort of a spread, avocado is an awesome alternative for that. But obviously, if you're looking to bake, if you're looking to do other things, then, you know, it's not the best alternative. But, yeah, that's something that I would do instead of using butter. All right, you guys, so that's it for my tips on how to replace dairy in your diet. Like I mentioned, none of these are necessary. You don't need to always think about replacing these foods. Always think about what sort of delicious vegan meals that you can make without thinking about, oh, how can I replicate some of my old meals? Meals. Of course, we all want to you know, have some of that nostalgia and eat foods from our childhood, which is why I don't oppose having alternatives to these products. But you will soon find, once you follow a plant-based diet, that it is really, really easy to eat delicious plant-based foods without missing all of those animal products. So if you do this for long enough, it might become second nature to you like it has for me. So hopefully this video was helpful to you guys. If you want to share this with anybody that might be thinking about following a more plant-based diet, feel free to do so. If they are helpful to you, please let me know down below your thoughts. And of course, give this video a big thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!